You are listening to Israel Vision Talk with hosts Dr. J. and Mary Dell Rawlings. December the 11th, 2017, marked the 100th anniversary of the liberation of Jerusalem from the 400-year rule of the Ottoman Turkish Empire in the Holy Land. It was a festive event as Lord General Allenby was honored and remembered. His great-great-nephew read out his ancestor's declaration from the steps of the Tower of David exactly where it happened a century ago. For the great adherence of three great religions of mankind and his soul has been concentrated by the prayers and pilgrims of multitudes of devout people of these three great religions for many centuries. Therefore, I do make it known to you that every sacred building, monument, holy spot, shrine, traditional site, endowment, peerless bequest, of customary place of prayer, of whatsoever form of these three religions will be maintained and protected according to the existing customs and beliefs to those whose faith they are sacred. This time, the costumed actors arrived reenacting the event. There were World War I Australian and New Zealand Army Corps, Anzac soldiers, Turkish pashas, local religious leaders, ladies in long skirts and bonnets. Even the legendary T.E. Lawrence of Lawrence of Arabia fame celebrated as they awaited the arrival of Field Marshal Edmund Allenby, commander of the British Army's Egyptian Expeditionary Force, to officially liberate Jerusalem from Muslim rule. It all happened just a day before Hanukkah and two weeks before Christmas, 100 years ago and today. With TV cameras capturing the historic event, the only thing missing was Allenby's horse, from which he dismounted before entering the holy city on foot in a show of humility and respect for all the veterans, including the Jewish fighters who had suffered under repeated conquests throughout the centuries. English horsewoman Tracy Elliott Reap paid her respects in a similar manner the very day before. With Jerusalem being declared the capital of modern Israel by U.S. President Donald Trump just a few days earlier, Therefore, I have determined that it is time to officially recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. While previous presidents have made this a major campaign promise, they failed to deliver. Today, I am delivering. It was now a new day for Jerusalem, just as it was in 1917. A hundred years ago was a very significant moment in history of the world and also in uh, modern history of Israel as a nation. Israel was not a nation yet, but it was still a very important date. It was the day when uh, General Allenby came into Jerusalem to uh, proclaim Jerusalem liberated from the Ottoman Turkish Empire that had ruled here for 400 years, from 1517 to 1917. And uh, thank, it was a very thankful day, Meridale. Why was it important from a spiritual point of view? Well, Jerusalem had never been acknowledged by anyone uh, since the time of the Crusaders were here. The Jews lost Jerusalem, were driven out as we know in history. The Crusaders came, then the Ottoman Turks came, and now Britain was waking up and saying, listen, we want to claim this part of the world for, for the empire of Great Britain, the British Empire. So it was, a, it was an earth-shattering happening, and it was Christians that, that prayed Mr. Balfour's declaration into being. That's right. And this is the out, outworking of it here, right here in this spot. It's very interesting because Lloyd George, who was the Prime Minister of his England at the time, he was a devout Christian, a Welsh Christian, and uh, read the Bible, was a, a familiar with Bible prophecy. And uh, he told, he asked General Allenby to come into Jerusalem to take the city without firing a shot. And how was that going to happen? Well, there was uh, an old 
saying, actually an Arab saying that said that Jerusalem would uh, not be liberated until the time uh, that the Nile River flowed uh, into Palestine. Interesting, honey, because what did Lloyd George read in Isaiah 31? Yes, it said that by um, the liberation was in Isaiah 31 that said by birds flying over Jerusalem uh, that the power of the Lord would be released and be deliver Zion and Jerusalem. Okay, and that's exactly what happened. The planes flew, and people had never seen planes in that er in this area a hundred years ago. Planes flew with leaflets dropping down on the Arab people in Arabic saying that uh, Jerusalem would be liberated by Al-Nabi or Allenby. And uh, they were so afraid when they saw this that the prophet of God was coming to deliver Jerusalem that they began to leave. On the evening of December the uh, 8th and 9th, the Ottoman Turkish army left Jerusalem. They went down to Jericho and were on their way back to Damascus. So the whole city, so the whole city was actually liberated uh, by that fact that there was planes flying over like birds, promises of the scriptures. The thing that, that, that caught my interest was that the mayor of Jerusalem at the time, who would have been a Muslim, walked by foot out of Jerusalem down towards Damascus. That's right, and we interviewed Anna Grace Lind in Apples of Gold, and it was her mother, Mrs. Spafford, who was a nurse at the time, and she was able to deliver a, a, a blank, a, a sheet to the mayor of Jerusalem to symbolize this, the, uh, the uh, surrender of, of Jerusalem by the Turks to the, uh, to, the, uh, to the British. And the flag of surrender was uh, a white bed sheet from Anna Grace's hospital, which was today the Anglican school, on a broomstick. Yeah. <laughs> we want to say thank you. We're here in, uh, at, at Jaffa Gate. And in a few minutes, there will be a ceremony commemorating this memorable event in the history of this part of the world. In honor of our guests, the Allenby and Shea families, I want to mention General Allenby. He was a great military man who conquered the land of Israel. But in addition to his military strength, he was also a distinguished thinker and understood our city, Jerusalem, and its role in the world. He understood that Jerusalem has unique properties as a uniting force for the entire world, open for all tribes as represented here in the ceremony. Days after the conquest, he wrote about Jerusalem Every sacred building or custom place of prayer of whatever form of the three religions we will maintain and protect. Allenby was an essential part of Jerusalem's history, ensuring the city could fulfill its role in the world as a place where religion tolerance and mutual respect are our highest values. The city of peace that General Allenby described represents our aspirations for the city today and into the future. When Lord Allenby entered Jaffa Gate a hundred years ago, he met a small, impoverished, neglected city. Even in his lifetime, the city began to change for the better. Now, Jerusalem is undergoing major renaissance, a high-tech renaissance, a cultural renaissance, major investments in infrastructure, working for the benefit of all this re residents. The State of Israel honors the memory of General Alami, naming streets, squares, and bridges on his name. I want to thank you for coming here today to pay your respect to the liberator of Jerusalem, your ancestor, General Allenby. Thank you for the families for coming here. It's an honor to host you here. 
And uh, Mr. Mayor, maybe you can join me here. Uh, uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So, a um, hundred years ago, I stood here and I received the key to this wonderful city. And I think that a hundred years later, it's about time that I return it. <laughs> so, um, it's a little bit rusty, but you know, <laughs> keep it, watch it, it's the only copy. So, now you can knock it in the evening time and it will be safer. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. To another hundred wonderful years here in Jerusalem. Thank you. Thank you. You have been listening to Israel Vision Talk with hosts Dr. J and Mary Dow Rawlings. For more information, visit www.israelvision.com.